¿no? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar with the Devon International Recruitment Alliance. So my name is Carly Boyce and I'm the lead transition nurse for the Alliance. And we've got lovely Laura on the call. Laura, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hi everyone. My name's Laura. I'm the um, project and pastoral facilitator for the project, which is the Devon Alliance for International Recruitment. So nice to see lovely. you all. Thank you. So this is part three of our bite size OSCE training videos for all nurses that were recruited in our Dubai recruitment campaign back in April. Um, we've already had some of you arrive in country and a lot more of you are arriving in the next few months. So as you know, on our Dubai group chat, um, we are now working in collaboration with our Specialist Language College, SLC, and we have a three library of OET resources for you. Um, I've already sent that out to quite a few of you nurses that have requested it. Please email me at carly.boyce1 at nhs.net if you haven't received the materials. Um, these materials will really help you improve your English um, and get over the line in terms of your OET scores. So we're going to spend today talking about fluid balance. Now, the fluid balance is one of the skill stations within the OSCE exam, and it's one of the main ones that people fail on. So we thought it'd be a good one to look at early on. So um, as we go through, as with all of our presentations, this isn't just about teaching you to pass your OSCE. This is also about providing you with education um, and that's really important. So I'm going to go through. Um, if any of you have got any questions, pop them in the chat. Laura's on the call and we'll answer them as we go. Um, as with all of our webinars, they are free for you to access. We will post this later on our YouTube channel. That's Nursing in Devon. Um, they're all there and free for you to access. Please use them, all right? OK, so let's start fluid balance. So if you could go to the first slide, please, Laura. OK, so what is fluid balance and why? So you're all trained nurses in your own country and you know that fluid balance is described as a balance of the input and output of fluids in the body. This allows metabolic processes to function correctly. OK, and it is absolutely one of our tools in our nursing toolkit that we use in determining hydration status. So the basis of monitoring fluid balance is, is part of our assessment. We have to record and calculate the input and output of fluid of a patient very carefully. Now, a recent study carried out by Chapel Howe and Crouch, um, they found that actually hypovolemia, so that's a low fluid status, and hypervolemia, so that's when a patient is overloaded, that does increase mortality and morbidity. So it's really vital and it is one of our most important skills to use. So we have to be so accurate when we do record fluid balance and it's really vital as we manage our patients. Next slide, please. So this is just a quick refresh for all of us nurses as to how much of the body is composed of water. So water is distributed throughout the body and organs and the water content of various organs depends on their composition and their makeup and it ranges from 83% in blood to only 10% in adipose tissue which is our fat tissue all right so you can see that muscles got a 76% water count and there's 75% water in the brain okay so it's quite surprising when you look at it next slide please now, balancing input and output. It's a real balancing act, isn't it? So we've got the input, that's everything we put into our body. So that includes everything we take by mouth, IV fluids, any drips we've got going, NG feeds, um, any drugs. Now, remember, fluid is calculated as anything that is liquid at room temperature. So um, this is a question I was often asked when I was on the wards is would you include ice cream? Yes, you would, because it's liquid at room temperature. All right, so that's really important. Um, as output, that is everything that is coming away from the body. So that includes urine, um, bowel movements, including stoma bags, diarrhea and vomiting as well. Now, I would also add on to that is any other secretions such as excess sputum, 
um, secretions and all those sorts of things. So our daily requirements we've got there. Um, so we've got sodium, which is uh, on the chemical table is Na, and that's one millimole a kilo. Uh, potassium, which is a K, and that's one millimole a kilogram. And calories is a minimum of 400 calories, all right? So our minimum urine output per person is between half and one mil per kilo per hour. All right. So we would have to calculate that on an individual basis because everyone weighs slightly differently, don't they? Next slide, please. Now, it can be difficult to keep track of a patient's fluid balance. OK, and there's just some pictures there of, of ways we do collate uh, urine output. So if someone's on a strict fluid balance chart, OK, so we're really keeping an eye on their close intake and output. You know, we would give them a collection container, wouldn't we, for when they go to spend a penny. So in England, we call it spend a penny. That means going for a wee. OK, uh, so when they visit the toilet, they could use the bottle and they could then let us know that the bottle's in there and then we could take it away to measure it. They might need support to use a bottle. You know, some sort of elderly patients or patients having difficulty with mobility, they might need a hand to stand up to use a bottle. Um, and, you know, lots of our patients find it easier to stand up and use a bottle. Um, you know, it's quite difficult sometimes to sit down and wee for males. So we use a commode and our commodes have a cardboard insert where we can measure output um, and we can often use that and weigh it in the sluice on our weighing scales. Um, and, and it's quite helpful, isn't it, that the, the sort of the cardboard trays that we use in the commodes and the urinal bottles, we can empty into a jug in the sluice and measure it in a measuring jug in case we get the absolute accurate calculation of output. Obviously, an important note is you need to minus the weight of the bottle and also minus the weight of the cardboard insert that has been used to collect um, any urine. Now, when you're doing a really strict fluid balance chart for urine output, for example, patients that may be on a drastic restriction, for example, our heart failure patients that may be overloaded with fluid, um, they may be on a heavily restricted fluid intake and we may be calculating their urine output to the point where we are weighing pads um, and things like that. So if they do have pads for incontinence, we would be weighing those pads and subtracting the weight of the pad. All right, next slide, please. So we've just touched upon this earlier, but so how much is a normal output for an adult? So it's half a mil per kilo per hour. OK, so if someone's 80 kilograms, an average adult, we'd be looking at a minimum of 40 mils an hour, and that is an absolute minimum. So for all of you nurses that work in intensive care or those real high dependency areas, you will have urometers on catheter bags and you will be monitoring every single drop that comes through that bag and marking it on your fluid balance chart. And obviously it's also important to escalate if you're really concerned about a patient's urine output, you need to escalate that quickly because it is one of the first things um, that gives us a clue that our patient is going to start to deteriorate. So obviously if your patient's urine output does dip off, check are they drinking enough? Are they getting enough fluid input? Obviously count everything they've had to drink, cups of tea, cups of coffee, check their water jug. Are they sweating a lot? Do they have a sepsis? You know, are they losing fluid that way? All of these things you've got to consider. It might be that they've forgotten to ask for the toilet or they've left a bottle in the toilet and not let you know. So that's why it's so important to keep a close eye on these people. Also people with memory problems. So patients that are suffering from cognitive impairment, such as uh, dementia, you know, they may have forgotten to use a bottle when they went to the toilet. So you've got to keep reminding them just to make sure we have really got that clear um, accuracy on our fluid balance chart. Again, if you're concerned, escalate to the doctor looking after the team or the senior nurse. All right, next slide, please. <clears throat> So what are our causes of dehydration and any signs? So dehydration is defined as a 1% or greater loss of body mass because of fluid loss. All right. 
Now, some of the first symptoms you might see is they might have that start to have a little bit of slight confusion, a little bit of reduced effort in physical performance. They may have that headache and feel really tired uh, and dark areas around the eyes may start to look sunken in around here um, and skin may appear dry and less elastic and soft. Now, and also another trick is skin turga where we pinch up the patient's skin. Now you can see I'm nicely hydrated and I will spring back within two, well, one second actually. If there's a delay on that, that's a delay in capillary refill. I'm sure you've all been trained in this. That's another sign of dehydration, okay? Next slide, please. So what are we gonna do about it? If this dehydration persists, um, we know their blood pressure is gonna drop and they're gonna have hypotension, okay? Because they're not having enough fluid in. We might often see that if, uh, you know, it's very common to, for elderly patients um, not to want to drink too much later on in the day because they don't want to spend too much time on the toilet in the night or have to be woken to get out of bed. Um, and particularly in the hot season uh, where we know we need to increase our fluid input, um, that's really important. So we know the first thing, blood pressure is going to drop. You're going to see that on their vital signs. You're also going to see an increase in uh, heart rate, it's tachycardia, a bit of a weak and thready pulse, okay? So you'll feel their pulse and it'll feel a little bit weak. They'll start to shut down a little bit, they'll get cold hands, so peripheral signs, cold hands and feet, um, oliguria, so that's what we call reduced urine output, okay? So start to um, remember these key terms because you will need them in your OSCE. Uh, some of our renal patients um, are termed as having anuria post dialysis that's no urine output at all okay and that can sometimes be very concerning next slide so what do we do about it okay what do we do to prevent dehydration so this does not include patients that may be nil by mouth for surgery um, and this does not include patients that may be on a very strict fluid restriction because of heart failure or other reasons so these are all very basic things. Make sure the water jug is in reach. So make sure the table is close to the bed and they can reach it and it's fresh water. Tell the patient you're monitoring and recording the amounts. And actually a lot of patients will rec record on the fluid channels for you. If they've had a drink, if they've had a can of Coke, they will enter the amount. So get their input, get their en engagement with it. It will really help. And another thing is sometimes patients will leave the ward to go and have a coffee with family down in the canteen. Um, remind them to let them know, let you know if they've had any tea or coffee or fluid off the ward. Sometimes people not, well, there are some people that don't just like drinking water and obviously on the clinical areas, we do have things like squash and fruit juice available for them along with teas and coffees, but it might be that you wanna to speak to family members and get them to bring in some fluids. For example, you know, if, if they particularly like um, cranberry juice, Ribena, um, ask the family to bring them in and that'll really help you to provide um, good fluids for the patient. And as I've talked about, and I could spend a whole day talking about fluid restriction with heart failure, heart failure patients because I used to be a heart failure specialist nurse. You've got to be very careful with those patients, all right? Um, speak regularly and closely with the medical team. They may be on a fluid restriction if they are overloaded with fluid. Um, you need to monitor them carefully and those sorts of patients would be on daily weights in the morning, um, but we're not going to go, we're not going to go into that too much today. Next slide, please. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit more now about the OSCE station for fluid balance, fluid, excuse me, a fluid balance chart. So what are you going to expect in the exam? So the fluid chart is used to document what fluid is given to the patient at what time, and it allows us to record output. OK, so exactly what you were used to. So when you calculate this over a period of time on the fluid chart, you can see in total, in, in totality, what's gone into the patient and exactly what has left the patient. So you will start to see a deficit if they've had too much in and not enough out or the other way round. So we can see the balance and see if the patient requires fluid to achieve euvolemia. OK, so that's a good fluid balance status for the body. And we can also see from our calculations if the body is producing correct and safe levels of urine 
and whether the kidneys are functioning effectively. OK, and like I said before, this is another tool in our tool bag as a nurse, isn't it? So in the exam, you will be given a record of a patient's intake of fluids, including intravenous fluids such as a drip and also what urine output they have done during the day. OK, so you will be provided with that information. A second sheet will be given to you which is a fluid chart and on that you will be required to transfer the information you've been given and you need to really record that accurately with times and a running total and all the charts will start at 8 a.m. OK, so in recap, you will be given the amounts the patients drunk or had as IVs and all the rest of it and also how much they have peed. You need to transfer that information over to the fluid balance chart. Next slide, please. So this is a fluid balance template, OK, and this is the chart you will need to transfer the information onto. Please make sure you enter, you write on it clearly. Now, the fluid balance OSCE station is a silent station, OK, so there won't be any actresses or patients talking to you. It's a silent station, so you've really got time to focus. Take your time with it. Write clearly, OK? Please don't cross through things unless you can avoid it. Don't overwrite on things. If you do make a mistake, strike through it clearly and then write beside it. But don't. It's got to be clear and not messy. Because like I've said before, this is the one, one of the most common skill stations that nurses fail on. Now, another tip is. Um, if a patient, if you've been given information that the patients have their bowels open, this won't affect the fluid information, um, but you still need to record it. All right, so just remember that. Next slide, please. So we're going to go on to the next slide and it's going to show the chart. So fill it, like I said, fill it in accurate, look accurately using the information that's been given to you from the patient records. Please document the exact times as given an amount. Don't get the times wrong because as we said, this will cause you to fail. Sign, date and state whether in, they're in a negative fluid balance or positive. OK, next slide, please. Right, so for example, this is just an example. So you can see there, so it will start at 8 a.m. Um, the patients obviously had a cup of tea or some juice at nine o'clock and that 250 mils has been entered. You can see on the next col uh, column parental intake, you can see they've got a Hartman's drip running at 166 mils per hour. So you can see in the green column there is the hour total and then beside it in red is total as it goes by the hour. All right. Um, and the same for output. So it looks like they had a wee at eight o'clock that's been recorded as 250. So it's very clear. Um, and as I mentioned for bowels, they've put yes because it will be taken into account. But obviously you can't record that. Um, but just make sure everything is entered and then you can see the total balance in the bottom of the right hand corner is they are in a negative fluid balance of 104 mils. So that means by the time they've entered all of the input, and then all of the output, um, they are peeing more than they've had in. All right, next slide, please. Right, so don't forget, like all scenarios, you need to check the scene and safety before entering. So it's like any other skill station, you check it safe to approach, go through all of those things, use hand hygiene as appropriate, Make sure you read the scenario properly before the procedure and you are given five minutes for reading this. Take a breath and just take your time. Take note of any values that have been given to you, OK? And you may be asked to calculate the cumulative amount. So this means the total amount from all of the values that you are given. Don't forget to add the IV values, the intravenous values. And as we saw on the previous slide, there's a parental input that's for drips, IV fluids, flushes or any other liquids that have been given for medication. Please add everything because it all adds up. If you make an error, like I've said before, strike through it and clearly rewrite. So verbally and clearly identify your patient before starting. So our common pitfalls is forgetting to sign the chart. 
for getting to data and noting whether it's a positive or negative cumulative result. OK, so please, please take some time. Um, make sure your handwriting is clear. Strike through errors. One straight line through the word and sign and date. Please identify the patient correctly from the offset and also Please use PPE correctly when you're handling the catheter. All right. Some patients in the scenario will have a catheter and you'll be expected to um, use correct protective personal equipment. So please check. Next slide, please. Oh, next slide, please. Oh, Laura, are you there? It's frozen. I have. Oh, OK, we're having okay. Teams issues today, aren't we? That's OK. We're okay. almost there. Yep. Um, so the next slide is some read, reading information and some links for you. So there's some really good articles around about fluid balance. Now, really keen that this isn't just about teaching you to pass an OSCE station. This is about your learning as well. Um, so we will put all of this on our Nursing in Devon YouTube channel. Please have a look at it. Um, there's also a link in there for a run through of a fluid balance OSCE station. Um, so have a look um, and, you know, just start to get a feel of it. Obviously, you will all have really comprehensive OSCE training programmes when you arrive in Devon. So this is all just to give you an idea. But like I've said before, fluid balance is one of the main ones people fail on. So please just take some time um, getting to know the do's and don'ts and the common pitfalls because it will really help. Um, so we will bring you your next session in a couple of weeks. We'll advertise it on the Dubai WhatsApp chat, um, but please use this resource. It's there for you and it will really help when you start, start your OSCE training. Um, I don't know if we've had any questions in the chat, Laura. No, nothing. No, that's fine. OK, all right, guys. Well, I hope that's been really helpful and I ho hope these bite sized OSCE education sessions are helpful for you and you're finding them useful. If there's anything we haven't looked at and you'd like to see it, please let us know. You can let us know in the chat um, or email us. We're always happy to um, to put together different educational resources for you and we will see you on in a couple of weeks. So take care. Bye, bye everybody. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.